So let's get started with our first first component or or a first actually item on the screen, which is a which is a mobile screen. How we're going to create that is by pressing F. It creates it, it goes into this frame mode. So what a frame is basically the artboard or or in Figma it's called frame, which is basically what what your screen is. So over here I can I can go to the phone section and I can select um a screen that i that i would like to create so i'm i'm selecting here as iphone 11 pro size which is this one or if you want to create a frame of your own custom size what you can do is press f and then just drag out uh, whatever size you want but we're not going to use that for now so i'm just going to press delete and remove that and um so yeah looking at our sign up flow the first thing we need is Okay, this is a little complicated. Uh, I will, I'll just, I'll just dictate what, we, what we're going to need. So the first thing we need is some sort of a welcome screen when a user opens the app. So, so they should be greeted with some sort of, you know, hello, this is, this is what we're doing. And, uh, and it could be like a, it could be like a slider of like different text, which could be like, okay, we're doing this thing. You can do this thing on our app and just a list of different services that you're offering on your app. So, so that could be on a welcome screen. Uh, the next thing we could have is um, a button to, to create an account. Um, the next button could be if, if you're already an existing user to sign in. So, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to press T. So this is to create the first text, um, which, is, which will be um, a service or like something that we're doing. And once let me just drag out so what i'm doing is pressing t and then dragging it out so it creates a text box and i type here a text like um find and book events around you this could be one example um let's give it 36 px size okay so on the right side what you can see is different uh, properties for whatever object you're selecting um, so on the top, there are some alignment properties, which you can use to align to left, center, right, up, middle, bottom. And, and once you have more than two objects, what you could do, once you've selected more than two objects, you could, you could also adjust the alignment between them. So this could be, you know, how much spacing you have. So if I, if I have three objects here and now I want to align them with like equal spacing in the center, what I can do is select this option. That's what um, the alignment tools are. Let's we'll get rid of these. Um, next, we have just um, X, Y coordinates, um, the width and height. Um, this is the the angle, so you know, pretty straightforward. Um, constraints. So this is something that's used in responsive design. What you do is basically. Um, you have different constraints. So what happens is if I resize my UI, um, this, this particular uh, item or object is going to, is going to say, stay along the left, left side. If I increase the size from the left side, you can see that it's moving with equal spacing over here. Um, so this is, this is useful for when you're having, you know, websites or responsive, if you're designing responsive websites, you can have, uh, you can have the same UI you can experiment with different sizes or different widths. So I'll change this to, to center. But over here, you know, in this use case, we're just designing it for one screen. So it, it's fine to have no constraints set on this. But if you put center, you can see what happens here. It stays in the center. All right. Um, next, we have just some layer options. So this could be different, different blending modes. Um, this, is a, this is just to change opacity. The text part is kind of important. This is where this is where a lot of the magic lies. Um, typography is really important in UI design, and um, it's good to have good fonts on on what you're, whatever you're using. And um, one one pretty good font is um, it's it's you know used by it's used in a lot of apps. Um, a lot of companies use Monster Ad. It's it's completely free. If you guys want a really good um, font resource, it's, it's Google fonts. So we've created our text field, but this is our caption for the welcome screen. I'm just going to go with an extra bold weight. Or maybe try something bold. 
and over here i can play with the with the letter spacing this is how much space is there between the the different characters so i don't know something at around minus 4 looks nice um let me also reduce the line spacing which is this is the amount of space between the different lines make it on i'm using the arrow key to go down on that and so we have that ready next we need a button so this button would be for getting started with uh, you know okay get started with sign up or creating an account so for button what i'm going to do is simply press on angle tool and i will be able to draw out a rectangle on the screen if if you guys want to to you know look at the different shortcuts or, or what i'm using what you could do is look at the top toolbar here and, and just look at the different shapes you can create. And there are shortcuts beside the, the type of, of shape that is so. So I can press L for line. I can press O for making an ellipse. And um, if you want to you want to make it like you know proportional, what you have to do is press shift. So, so you press O and you press shift and then you create a, a rectangle. Or if you don't press shift, what it's gonna do is make a make a very irregular sort of uh, you know not proportionate circle so so pressing shift helps you create you know items or, or objects on your screen proportionally um so cool we have our our box here i'm just going to give it a little more width then um i think the height can be at 50. So after or after after designing a lot of different you know components and screens um you sort of get an idea of what size you want on the screen so, so generally using 328 by 50 on on the 10 screen is is pretty good for having a button so so this is what i'm using um let's give it a color so uh, now i'm just gonna keep it black i'm gonna change it later uh, i'm gonna make a text field here i'm just gonna write uh get started and you guys can see it's it's following the style from the previous text box i'm gonna make it 14 white put it in the center using the using this alignment then uh, what's my favorite font so so i i really like montserrat montserrat is is in my opinion you know it's very robust i can use it on any sort of interface and it looks good um another good font is poppins so poppins is always that's what it looks like and and the reason you might also see me using like really bold and heavy weights is yes once again <laughs> um the reason i'm using bold weights is is because of um a trend which is being followed in a lot of different apps that um using using bold fonts is is sort of the, the trend right now it's a design trend so you'll see a lot of apps or, or you know startups and new apps using a little heavier weight on their on their designs so for the button, I'll, I'll stick with the medium. Let's change this back to monster ad. And, and um, so another text option you can change over here is this. What this does is it, it creates the text box to be the size of the sentence or whatever character you have typed inside the text box. This is auto width. So now the width of the text box is going to be anything I type in this. So just to, you know, if I want to align it with this, you know, it's not in the center anymore. I can use the align tool here. I can also add to the center. So it's perfectly in the center. Next we need, say, if you're already signed in, so what happens then? So we can just duplicate this item. So how, how I did that was selecting both these items with the our rectangle and our text and pressing Alt and then just dragging it out. So now what we can do is just as I said before, press Alt or, or Option if you're on Mac and then just drag this out like that. And um, if you want to keep it in the center, because sometimes you might you might do this. If you want to keep it in the center again, press Shift Alt at the same time and then drag it out like that. So it it gets it gets snapped to like the, the first objects, you know, whatever axis you're on. I can also do this with the Y axis. So if I press Alt and Shift, and then drag it on this side it stays it stays you know fixed to this 
that's a pretty good you know shortcut to to you know quickly design something without making a lot of movement on your screen um so this could be sign in so i'm just going to make this extra bold because it's sort of what my knack is saying all right i'm just going to push this up a little and um it's feeling a little incomplete so i think what we can do is add a small message below this i think it could say something like uh find find the best events or something like that so let me just change that oops let me go here so this was going to change it to auto hide now i can just uh increase the size from here uh -huh. find or for the Performances. Okay. Performances in your already. That's one, and we're just gonna align it with the rest rest of our buttons. So if you see that I'm I'm keeping a specific space on the side, and that's because of a safe margin. And um, if you look at the different guides. That I've, that I've mentioned before, the material guides. What they talk about is safety margins. And these are basically areas on the screen where, where the user might, you know, touch accidentally. So it could be as you're holding the phone, you might touch the you might touch the edges and you might go to something, something you might do an unwanted action. So what you want to do is keep a safety margin on the left and right hand side and even the top, top, the top and bottom to to just keep clear of, of any unwanted um you know, feedback. Let's push this up a little. Here, so we have it, have it close by. So we're keeping a little bit of, uh, you know, the flow. So as you read, you, you automatically go to the next one and then you see, okay, that's what it means. So, so this could be our first, you know, caption on our welcome screen. I'm just going to move this down a little. And the reason why is because this part is looking very empty. And what we're going to do is fill it with an image. So for the image, what I'm going to use is Unsplash, which is um, a really awesome source for finding um, stock images. These images are free to use and you could just go to unsplash.com to, to, you know, look for any sort of image. So here I'm talking about events. So let me, let me look for a stock event or something like that. Get photos of a, a concert. Um, Okay, so this looks cool. Um, let's download this. I'm just gonna save the large size. And using large size is good because it makes your work very high quality. So, so I re recommend using you know non-pixelated um, images. Let's just go here and I, go, I just go to my Figma file and just leave the photo on top. So what it does, it fills the the frame with the picture. And I'm just gonna reduce the size. Not not by just dragging, but pressing shift and then dragging the dragging the edge. So so that makes the image smaller proportionally. All right. So I have my image set. Um, I need to send this to black because I'm using it in in the back side. So what I'm going to do is just just right click on this on this object. And I'm going to send to back. And you might see that. Wait. Okay. I can't really see on the on the screen. What we're going to do is just select the screen and on the right side, you can see selection colors. Selection colors tells you what all the, what are the different colors that are present on, on whatever you've selected. So right now there are, there are just two colors I've used. So what I can just do is select this, which was the black color and, and make it white and select the white color, which was the, the text before and make it black. So, so in that case, it, it's really quick to just like switch over for the style. And, um, and this is why, you know, Figma is, is, is focusing more on, you know, the solving the problem, then figuring out how to, how to, you know, change, change those small things. And, and hold up, this looks very bright. So, so that brings me to my next point, which is you should, you should never like use very strong or pure white colors on your screen. You should always set, you should always fix it to something that's a little darker or toned down to the, to the real white. I'm going to use a, a, a type of white, which is FA. This is slightly darker 
and it doesn't create a lot of contrast between the between the actual you know background and and the front so i hope i have applied fa everywhere and uh, so the get started button this get started text is looking very small i'm just going to make it any bold and um, the next thing is um, you see both of them have the same color you know both of them are white and this is this is not the best practice what you need to do is you need to make one call to action on your on your screen so what, I, what i'm going to how i'm going to do this is by changing the color for get started i'm going to turn it into something that's that's a little different so this could be our brand colors so over here i think i will just pick something off the screen okay that's too dark uh i think this purple shade looks cool so i'm going to go ahead with this purple shade um there's a lot of research done even behind choosing colors you know the in the research phase you you sort of pick out okay for your app or whatever problem you're solving what color looks the best so you might see zomato and talabat using orange and red colors because that is what evokes you know hunger and and you might see facebook using something like blue because that's what um that's what spreads you know like like happiness or like cheerfulness optimism so so yeah there's this like a color psychology involved as well and uh, as you can see now that i've made this purple and this thing is black so it's it's creating it's it's a little difficult to read so so for that what you do is so so that there is there isn't enough contrast and um, there is a there is a contrast guideline available that you guys can read it's called wcag and uh, it's really important for certain apps to to meet this guideline and even for many design awards um, you know they look out for for you guys following certain certain guidelines on on you know wcag or it could be human interface or material that could that could ultimately like you know that could basically lead to you know a better usability in the award at the end so so what we're going to do is just make this white so that there's enough contrast there are different plugins available on figma that allow you to check the contrast and then what i can do is basically add oops i can basically take this color which is my background color right here and then take my foreground color and here you can see that okay the contrast ratio is 1.7 which is not like wait not white All right okay that's good now you can see that the contrast ratio is is perfect it's 5 is to 1 and that is that is the best so you're passing all sort of wcag aa aaa standards and and that's what we want to go for so so yeah this is this is perfect um next up what i'm going to do is show how to add corner radius how to change the corner radius on this after you've selected the rectangle you can see this small dot over here and what you could do is just drag this inside and it it will it will basically bring in all the corners or you could go here and change the corner radius from this side so that right to 20 you can change it to 10 actually let's just go full round it on this because i just feel like um similarly for this one as well I can I can change the corner radius at the same time for both of them by selecting both and then changing it from here to so put it to a really high value makes it fully rounded. Ah, uh, yeah, that's a difference between using you know actual actual UI design tools and design tools meant for um like like Illustrator or Photoshop that are meant for more you know um that are more, that are based for more pictorial sort of you know pieces that could be illustrations. and uh, and posters or something like that so so but uh, we see a problem here right you see like the the image is sort of of hiding our text what we do here is in this case we can add a drop shadow and to add a drop shadow in figma all you got to do is on the side just just below the text option you can see an effects option here you just click plus on that and it creates a drop shadow So, so that's a really quick way to create a drop shadow. You can edit the drop shadow by clicking on this on this effect settings page. 
on this FX settings button and you get some more options. So, so blur would basically be how much of how much of the, the darkness you're seeing gets that's you know evened out. Um, spread is how far the shadow would go. So I can I can just show it to you guys. Oh, but it says that I can only use the spread for a rectangle. So so not for the text. So so yeah. Then the opacity. So you can see it increase here. But we we're not gonna put it like really high. So well, let's just keep it at what it was. That's perfect. Um, reduce the opacity of the image so so we could we could do that that's a good idea but currently our frame is our frames color is uh, white or something that almost black so we could we could do that so make sure your your background is is good so I'm gonna take this suggestion and make this something like 80 or 70 that's looking good Another thing you can do is maybe create a, a gradient in the image, which is, which could be like a black gradient and, and slowly fading out as it goes up. And um, that, could, that could help your text be more readable on, on the page. So, so yeah, this, this, this solution works for us. We'll go with this. Next, what we can do is uh, maybe, maybe put like our app name somewhere on the top just to like okay tell you who what this app is or what the app's name is so i'm just gonna create simply you know just a text box and write a name called eventually um i'll use poppins for this make it extra bold make it white i'm gonna center line this and maybe try so, so that's our welcome screen. Um, you've basically highlighted what your app is. You've given out okay, this is what this is what our app is about, and uh, you're giving the user two options. And to get started, um, maybe you could change the texture to say um, we create an account. So it's clearer to the user on what action to take, um, and if if they want to basically sign in, then what or sign up, you know, what do they do? This is this is this will be clearer. Um, and sign, you know, sign in if they have an account. So we can change the name of our screen from here, which would which you basically have to select it. And on the layers panel, which is the left hand side, you can just double click and then change it to that will not be like long. Okay. And um, yeah, that's that's our first screen. Um, you can you can keep playing around with the different components. You can arrange them in a different style. You can you can also you know add a add a progress progress or page tracker, which could need which could basically be different features, and, uh, and that could be you know sliding continuously on the screen. So it could be like three different dots. And uh, actually, let me just show you a quick way to make that. What you could do is press O, so that it goes to the ellipse mode. Drag out a circle. Pressing shift and then um, add a stroke on it and make the stroke white because this is very this is a very tiny element so it, it's fine to keep it FFF as pure white and keep the fill as pure white as well that's okay and you guys will see in a second just how how quickly I can create these designs so I've I've just duplicated this using Control C Control V and it goes on top of each other. What I can do is just select all of these once and then just and then just like move it a little like this. And, and what I'm gonna do now is just drag this out a little over here, leave some space, select these objects, just just like slide over them. So we select. And you see that it has also selected the background image. So what I'm gonna do is just press shift and then do that. So it selects it and selects that object. Now I'm going to use the align property to just distribute the horizontal spacing. So now it's like this. And then I'm going to go to the auto layout tab. This is a really helpful feature in Figma and it helps you create more responsive designs. So, so what I'm going to do is just press plus here. And uh, you can see a couple of settings, which is this one, which is the spacing between the different elements. 
So, so now we have that. Let's increase the spacing a little. So let's make it 12. And uh, I'll give you an example of how this is responsive. So if we have a horizontal layout, we can get a vertical version of this. And uh, you can try out different options here, horizontal padding, and, and that's useful for making buttons. That's more of like an advanced thing when you start making more responsive designs. But for, for this use case, we will just stick to, to this style. So these buttons look pretty big. These, these page trackers look pretty big, so I'm just gonna reduce their size by that much. And put them in the center here. What I'm gonna do is just select, select, and then I will just hide, hide the fill. Now it looks like, okay, I'm on my first page right now. And this will slide automatically. So, so we're not going to design the rest of the screens. Um, I'm just going to let it be like this. So that, that's just like an example. So we're done with our first screen here. So if I show you the final design file here, which is what like, I had in mind to make, it, it had an illustration right here. So, so the reason why I'm not keeping the illustration now is to explain this one point, which is when, when you have an overlay of say, when you start typing here, you're going to have a keyboard that will come up and you don't want that to hide your field. So, so to, to, to combat that issue, what we'll do is keep the illustration out and, and keep this part up. So in that way, we have space to, for our keyboard to, to, to you know, just come up. And similarly, even, even after you press sign up with the phone, um, it basically takes you to, to this page, which will ask you to verify the phone number. Um, a lot of concepts that I've used to make this screen have already been explained before. Um, the, the different rounding, the changing options for the text. I'll go over what, what were the decisions that I made while making this. That could be helpful. Um, so, so after I click on sign up with phone, what happens is it takes me to this screen, which is verifying the SMS. So over here, there's, an, there's a message saying that um, enter the four digit code sent to the phone number. So what I'm doing here is entering entering the phone number of, of the number that you've entered before. This keeps the user informed about, okay, that's what that's what the phone number I entered. And and it, it, if if they've entered a wrong number, they would be waiting for it for like really, really long time. And and that would be a very bad experience. So it's good to inform the users what action they've taken on on what you know on what number. So so that's one tip. Then the other one was if, if they haven't received a code, there's an option to resend the SMS. And if they've entered the wrong number, they could tap on this and correct whatever um, incorrect uh, number they've added. Then um, we have a text here, which is basically before you sign up to an, any app or service, you have to accept some sort of terms of use and their privacy policy. So, so that text can, can before you sign up. So, um, so then what happens is it takes you to the successful UI. Um, so for, for validation over here, we are, we are telling the user that, Hey, you know, you've entered an incorrect code. So please try it again. And, um, this helps the user find out, okay, what they've done is actually wrong. Instead of keeping no message here, um, it's always good to inform the user what is, what is happening and keep them in loop with what, what is the next step to, to, to do. So, um, after you verify, you're basically taken to the successful, you know, UI and, um, and yeah, that's, that's all for the signup flow. Um, based on our, on our diagram, we have covered the, the user interface aspect of it. We've also looked at the UX part of it with the, with the, you know, error states, uh, informing the user where they are and, and, you know, informing them as much as possible and, and keeping them on the app. So yeah, I hope you guys understood something about, you know, UI, UX and, and designing on Figma.